Enlisted, how good is it? Enlisted is a bit of a controversial game, as some people love it and others, well, they don't really love it. Today we're going to be rating Enlisted out of 10 on 10 topics. There'll be no comparison to any other games such as Hell Let Loose or Postscriptum, just purely the opinion of an Enlisted player. This is mainly because I don't really want to spend any money on any game, so yeah. So let's get right into it. First off, we've got graphics. Now, if you've ever played this game, you know how the graphics look, and that is quite amazing. Even on bare minimum settings, which is what I play on, the game will oftentimes look like the ultra settings of other games. And to be honest, the difference between bare minimum and ultra settings are not huge. The grass looks great, the texture is quite amazing, some reflections and shadows are very realistic, and as a whole it just looks quite cinematic. So overall, I give this a 10 out of 10. Moving on to the second topic, sound design. Now sound has been a bit more of a controversial one, as some people quite literally dislike it, whilst others love it. Let's focus on the sounds of the actual gunfire first. For me, it's around 50-50. Some weapons sound incredible, and some weapons hurt my ears. For me, the M1 Garand sounds just right, and then you go to the Togo Arsenal SMG, which, um, yeah, it doesn't sound good. Apart from the actual guns, the overall all sound in the battlefield is very immersive. The sound of the tank engines are some of the best I've seen in any game and really give you a sense of fright, which in my opinion is very valuable. And all things considered, I give this a 7 out of 10. I think it just needs to improve on the way that gun sounds when firing. For the third topic, we're going to look at progression. This again is a bit of a 50-50 for me, as in enlisted crowbression. Crowbression? I literally read the script and it says progression. In enlisted, progression is very vast. Covering researching and buying weapons, upgrading squads, increasing the slots for soldiers and more. The thing that I have a problem with is the researching and buying weapons. Don't get me wrong, I think it is good for a game to avoid quick leveling up, as if you leveled up with everything under the first week, there's not really much point in playing the game any further because you've unlocked everything. However, there is such a thing as too much grind. My personal take from this is that Enlisted has just taken the progression system from War Thunder and just placed it into a first person shooter game. However, this clearly doesn't work. The reason for this is how much time it takes to research weapons, and then how you have the silver to buy the weapon. First off, the research cost needs to be reduced. For new players, if you have just started playing, this might not seem as a big issue, as tier 1 to 2 weapons are fairly priced in terms of how much XP you need to research the weapons. However, once you get into tier 3 or 4 or 5, the research cost of weapons can easily just become overwhelming. You can easily spend weeks on researching just one weapon, which in turn makes any players just want to leave the game. The second is the fact that most players won't have enough silver to even buy the weapons once you've researched them, because you, as a player, don't really get any silver from playing games. This means that you have to grind even more, even though you have already purchased the weapon, which in a World War II based shooter game, does not really go well. Now, the individual squad progression though, I am a big fan of, as it really means that you can customise what class you want to have in each squad almost entirely. So with all being said, I think it gets a 3 out of 10. Things to improve would be decreasing the XP required to research weapons and increasing the amount of silver you get for playing games. Number 4 is Gunplay. Now Gunplay gets dunked on a lot in Enlisted, but personally I do have quite a hard time seeing why it gets dunked on so much. For one, shooting someone with a bolt action is very satisfying. Your dopamine will become very pleased and most guns are quite easy to use. 
the problem I have are all the animations which are quite janky. Take for example Japanese Balties. But in the end, I will give this a 7 out of 10 just because of how satisfying it can be to down someone. And now for number 5, vehicles. Vehicle play is probably the most realistic in any game currently. For one, you don't get a third person view and your only viewpoints are from the commander's cupola, periscope, gunner's sight and driving slits. At first this does sound very daunting, that's what I thought at first. However, once you actually get to use them, it is extremely fun as it offers another very big layer of immersion on the battlefield. Not to mention, in Enlisted, you can drive over brick walls, sandbags and more, which is very fun to be honest. So overall, I give it a 9 out of 10. I think areas to improve would be to add some sort of metal texture in the areas that are black around the gunner sight and periscope. Also that was just talking about tanks, with aircraft it is the exact same, you don't get a third person view, you only get the view from the cockpit, which I'm, in my opinion is very cool. For number 6 we are going to talk about variety, and when I say variety I really mean the variety of maps and weapons in the game. In this stage, the game has hundreds of weapons and vehicles to choose from, ranging in all tiers. This I find great as if you want a real hardcore World War 2 experience, you're better off playing Hell Let Loose as there it will be much more realistic and you will basically have the standard loadout of any World War 2 soldier. Enlisted is historically based but not historically accurate. This means that it has the freedom for FG-42s to roam around in great numbers in high BR matches. So yeah. You basically can play any widely used weapon or rare weapon from World War II. The only caveat is that there are only really two BRs of weapons that are worth playing, those being BR2 and BR5. This is because they are at the top of their tiers in their games and in turn means that they get the best weapons. This means that playing BR3 or 4 isn't really going to be viable as your weapons will get outclassed. I will give this topic a solid 8 out of 10, and areas to improve would be to give BR3 and 4 their own separate queue. This is because the weapon differences between BR3 and 4 are not very significant and would also mean that you get to enjoy all of the weapons that Enlisted has to offer. For the map variety, it's basically the same story. The seventh topic is map design. Now, maps in Enlisted are very detailed, this gives the game a very immersive feeling and also just makes the game feel a little more special. However, the area that Enlisted lacks in is the playable area. Because of devs have aimed for large scale more realistic attacks or defences, the playable area is tightened so that all the players and bots get funneled into one specific area of the map. This is good as it really gives you the feeling that you are part of a massive offensive or invasion, however this does mean that the grey zone or non-playable area is much greater. This means that whilst you do get the packed and chaotic feeling of the battlefield, you also do lack the actual vastness of the battlefield and it greatly limits tactics such as flanking or encircling your enemies. Because of this, I will give map design a 7 out of 10. Areas to improve would be to increase the amount of team players from 10 to something like 15. This would in turn make it possible to increase the playable map, while still maintaining that action-packed and chaotic battlefield. For number 8, we are going to look at Immersion. Immersion is basically all categories except for progression combined into one. For immersion, the little things mean so much more than in any other category, and Enlisted has this. They have the very detailed maps, good physics, good atmospherical sound, great graphics and many classes of soldiers. However, the main other thing, which is animations of all types, especially on soldiers themselves and the guns, are very janky. 
many reload animations, leaning animations, sitting animations, getting from standing to crawl are all quite janky. Some are way too fast paced or clunky and others are just painfully slow for no reason. However, with everything else I am quite pleased and I usually do get quite an immersive game. So for this category, I am just going to give it a 8 out of 10. Areas to improve would just be to simply fix the janky and slow, well maybe they're slow, maybe the janky animations. Number 9 is realism. How realistic is enlisted? Now at first glance this game does seem very realistic with tanks being an immense threat, actual guns such as the M1 Garand being used and great graphics. However, when you actually look into the game, the more and more it starts to feel arcadey. For one, many maps apart from Berlin I have never heard of. A good example of this is the D-Day map. There was no D-Day landing site that ever took place on any terrain that remotely resembles this map. I think the reason why they did this was just to add a little more balance and make it more interesting for both sides but it is quite a shame to miss out on the actual landing sites of one of the most important invasions of history. And also, D-Day was very one-sided. The Germans completely dominated the beaches and the only reason why the Americans got to break through was because of sheer numbers. Even more disappointing was saint mère Église, which was actually a landing site of the 82nd Airborne Division and has a museum of it. Uh, however, in Enlisted, it is nowhere to be seen. With that being said, I will grant this uh, category a 6.5 out of 10. Now, our final category is going to be the community. By community, I mean dedicated YouTubers or TikTokers, potentially, and communication within the teams in battles. Surprisingly, the Enlisted community is much bigger than commonly thought. There's definitely more than 100,000 players that play Enlisted, and because of that, there are dedicated Enlisted content creators. So for the actual content creating community, it's quite vast and will have a video somewhere that is precisely dedicated to any of your questions. However, communication between players in battles is quite scarce. There are very few players that will actually talk with the team, discuss tactics, and warn the team of paratroopers. In fact, 90% of the time, it is just either the chats being taken up by pilots spamming need enemy coordinates, or just by angry players who will just cuss and insult the rest of the team. And if you are one of those players that just cusses against us, please stop. You're not helping the team and you'll most likely just get reported. So yeah, this category is kind of a 50-50 and because of that I'm not going to give it a 10 out of 10, instead a 5 out of 10. That's it for today's video, thank you so much for watching, if you wish please like and subscribe, it would mean a lot and would help me out a ton if you did. However, if you don't want to, that is also completely fine, you are always welcome. If you disagree with anything or just want to voice your opinion, please say in the comments below. However, please do try and keep this discreet with no strong language. If you are looking for anybody else, I highly recommend Major McDonald's. And that is it for today's video. See you guys.